morning welcome back to the lecture on 3D measurements. Now we will take you to the machining science laboratory uh, in mechanical engineering department and we will see what is coordinate measuring machine. So this is coordinate measuring machine in our machining science lab spectra coordinate measuring machine. And this is vertical bar this is a bridge type coordinate measuring machine. we have 18 pneumatic bearings. So, one bearing is on this side, okay, one on this column, 11 in this column. So, we are removing the bellow from here. When we remove the bellow, we can see there is a bearing inside. So, there are 11 bearings on this side, one on this side and six on this side. 11 plus 1 plus 6 is 18. So, this is pneumatic bearing. Okay, that helps to move the columns and various other moments. Okay, so, bellow helps us this bellow, this bellow helps us to save it from the dust to keep it secure from dust. So, this can move you know, you know this can move freely here. So, it can compress and produce spring motion due to air blow like there is air flow between the two surfaces it can com uh, compress and produce the spring motion. So, that it can move from one side to the other side. So, there are six bearings on this side. Okay. So, the side to side and, uh, movement is possible and uh, microfilm flows due to complete dry air. So, this is the controller, this is the controller that is used to switch on and off the compressor. Okay, so, this is the controller knob. So, we have Renishaw server power amplifier. Okay, Renishaw is the company, it is the make. So, this is the tube pipe from which compressed air is coming from the compressor. So, this is the Kaser compressor. Uh, it is refrigeration type air compressor. It is 100 percent moisture free that is uh, not going to harm the machine. So, the compressor that we have to use here, it has to be moisture free. You know, we are trying to save the machine using these bellows from uh, the dust and other impurities so that the dust particles does come in between the moving components and does it act as a abrasive. It, it may deteriorate the machine in the long run. So, to save that and also to save the machine from being corroded, this kind of refrigeration air compressor and moisture free air compressor is used. This is the control valve. So, the front view of the compressor looks like this, it is Kaiser air compressor. So, this is our coordinate measuring machine as I said, uh, this is used to measure the parameter of 3D objects. The 3D objects may be complex geometry or maybe some specimen. So, we can measure with the help of the CMM. So, it has three axes, okay. so, x, y and z. This is a 3, 3D object that we will measure using this coordinate measuring machine. Okay, we will try to measure the features of the job, this component. So, you can see there are number of circles here, okay, there is center circle here, center cylinder here, okay, we have circles here okay, and then, then we have six cylinders around this center cylinder. I okay, will just measure this full cylinder, okay. then I will this 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. I will measure try to locate these 6 circles not the cylinders. So, also we have a cone in the other direction, we have this cone here, we have this surface at an angle, this surface, this surface, okay, this plane and this plane is at 90 degree. So, let me first talk about the axis. Okay. This is, these are the there are 3 axes, when I switch on you can see that the indicator is on. So, this is our y axis when I move in this direction, this is our y axis, okay. this is our z axis, okay. this is z axis, we have actually this is L V D T, this is L V D T, we have 3 L V D T's, each axis has an L V D T, this L V D T is for, uh, this L V D T is for z axis. So, the inside the column above we have for y axis. Okay, here we have for y axis and also we have for x axis as well here. Okay, this is the probe, 
this is the probe we can rotate it to 90 180 degree okay the other uh, this is 180 degree okay it can rotate it to and this can be rotated to 90 degrees 0 to 90 okay so we can index it index to 90 degree here so index the point to 180 degree so this is the point position in the stylus so this is stylus if you see the tip of the stylus this is sapphire ball this is of sapphire material then the diameter is 2 mm so this rotation let you know this rotation is called as a this rotation is called as a and this rotation is called as b okay so a can rotate up to 90 degree b can rotate up to 180 degree okay 90 degree on this direction this can rotate up to uh, b can rotate up to uh, 180 degree or we will try to explain it uh, using the help of the software the name of the software is tangram software so how to start here we first click on the ucc server ucc as i said ucc is universal cmm controller so we have vanisa ucc controller which is designed to link the hardware of a coordinate measuring machine to the coordinate measuring machine host computer so this is the host computer we have the hardware machine so read heads probes probe head controllers limit switches emergency stop analog signals to server amplifiers joystick unit all these things are the components of the coordinate measuring machine the purpose of ucc is to permit the control of cmm from the front end software the controller provides the control signals to cmm probe system necessary to give uh, the required response for example to position the target to to the given parameters so there are certain purposes that this ucc controller accomplish for instance uh, data transfer and control so then um, communication with the controller then specialized controller features also they are like cmm measuring accuracy enhancement then measurement coordinate systems we can use different coordinate system digitizing and scanning uh, abilities are also there then um, data filtering can also happen using this controller here only because we can produce we can create the file in igs format so what is igs format uh, we can uh, we will produce igs format would produce a lot to lot of codes okay a lot of codes can be produced one who has some information of the codes can also use those uh, that format when we will produce a shape one thing is just have a geometrical shape another thing is we can have the data in excel format we can have the data in igs format so the graphic user interface one can try to learn in depth also so these things are possible interfacing to the other components is also possible through this ucs controller so next uh, i am trying to generate the platform to measure the features of the object so we click on the machine here okay we right click here and click set when we click set here so again then we again click yes okay the machine is going to home position now is the reference tool is when we click machine is going to the home position so i'll come to machine you can see the machine is going to home position by itself so going to home position uh, serve multiple purposes one thing is it is made sure that every each and every component is working properly second thing is that machine is now free to take it to the desired position where wherever the operator would like to take it to okay it will first wait went to z home position and it went to y home position and it went to x home position okay i can repeat it again so first is z home position then y home position this is y and x are moving simultaneously y and x home position so it has now went to the home position now machine is homed i can say okay there yes, yes. now machine is home now x is now machine is homed okay other components we have this software and we have this granite surface plate or surface table here this is zero grade surface plate as i said the accuracy is quite high and the thermal expansion is zero okay so the size of the machine is 500 okay this distance x distance x distance this distance is 500 okay 564 this distance is 600 
from here to here this distance is 600 and the height is 400. So, that is why it is known as 5, 6, 4. So, this is spectra 5, 6, 4. So, the next component is joystick. Okay. So, when we rotate this joystick clockwise it moves in z direction downwards. When I rotate it anti clockwise, it moves the z upwards. Okay. So, this is left x motion, x axis motion, okay. and similarly, I can have right x axis motion, y axis again back, back side, okay. then forward side. So, this is simple joystick, okay, the operating and control. So, only y and x axis are very similar to the movements there. So, only the thing is that rotation of this rotation of this knob anti clockwise and clockwise makes it to move makes uh, the z axis this is fast for, for forward. So, this is joystick x y and z okay, x y and z. So, this is engagement of sensitive mode engage sensitive mode if it is required. So, we would not work on this the software here is tangram we have the indicator here indicator would blink and uh, when this will touch and also a beep voice would come. So, we actually trying to put the voice over the recorded video. So, the laboratory actual laboratory conditions are quite noisy. We will also try to show you the actual laboratory conditions when we will start the measurement and like to hear the voice and the noise there as well. Now, we open the new project, the projects we open the new project, okay. then screen opens. So, first we take the reference system then we take three points top plane and uh, three points are taken uh, uh, from the other plane and cylindrical point from a region then we select the plane and move the joystick. So, this is our work piece the features of which we are going to measure. So, we will take three points on this plane three points on this plane. Okay. So, this is our cylinder this is cylinder what is this plane this is z y plane this is z x plane what is this top plane this is x y plane. Okay. So, this we have selected plane plane 1 it will try to record the points at least 3 points are required to define a plane. So, we will record the points using joystick we are trying to move the probe close to the component when they will touch the tip of the probe that is the fire material. Okay. We are doing it again we have selected the plane plane from here selected. So, before moving uh, the all the components we have point, line, plane, circle, arc, cylinder, 8 points are cone, 8 points, sphere we need multiple points for this layer, sphere, slot, sphere, slots, ellipse, curve, surface, torus they are you know they are multiple uh, objects here in this software and uh, this is just the general or the structured surfaces free form surfaces are when we just measure the free forms then we have distance angle point these are the construction measures okay what we need to measure the measure plan they measure the line so this is a uh, general measure okay that was construction then we have various other tools like uh, three dimensional uh, uh, other forms etc so we are just touching it 2 1 2 and 3 Okay, three points are now recorded in our software. So, it has shown this plane here, this plane 1 is now defined. We can name the plane as well, we can name it x y plane, we can mark it whatever name we would like to give, we can name the plane as well, but it has just marked it plane 1 because we did not change the name, the default name was plane 1. Now, we will select the plane again, it is select plane 2. Now, I am selecting the y z plane 1, 2 and 3 you can see the light blinking when the light is blinking that is the probe has touched 1, 2, 3. Okay. 3 points are recorded and the second plane which is perpendicular to this one is generated plane 1 and plane 2. Now, I will measure the cylinder. So, 3 points for plane was selected for cylinder we need 8 points. Okay. 8 points, 4 points in one plane, 4 other points in the second plane, 4 points in one plane means 4 points will give me the location of the cylinder 
of the, that will mark one circle, another four points at a little depth than the initial plane would give the second circle. These two circles would help us to generate a cylinder. The cone can also be generated similarly. So, this is 1, 2, 3 and 4. Okay. Similarly, little depth 1, 2, 3 and 4. Okay. So, this cylinder profile is generated we can see here. So, we have plane 1, plane 2 and cylinder. Now, we can set the reference system here, reference system that what should be the rest, reference point for rest of the work piece. So, I can keep the center of this cylinder as a region. For that, what I have to do, I select the reference system, select the primary axis, the primary axis here the primary axis. Now, I will select for the after primary axis, I will select plane 1 or minus z direction, minus z direction will be plane 1, plane 2 and cylinder. Plane 1, plane 2 okay. and next is cylinder. Okay. Now, the center of the cylinder is my origin you can see here. The center of the cylinder is my origin. So, this is my reference the two planes and one cylinder center has made us to select the reference system. So, we have got the origin point here that is the center point, origin point here the center point of the cylinder is the origin. So, next is how to measure all the parameters. We can select the circles here, these six circles, Okay, this is cone here as well. So, to measure the circle, we will select circle from here, then measurement parameters. So, it is uh, trying to uh, retract from the 2 mm, we have the internal 1. So, at least 3 points are required to locate a circle. So, we retract at 1. So, this is one, two, three. This circle is now located because the origin we already have, this origin we already have here. Okay, at this point we have the origin. The distance of this origin from here and this circle would be located by itself. Okay, first circle, another we can okay this circle is generated here. So I am not producing a cylinder here, I am just producing a circle. We can also produce a by taking 8 points in a similar fashion as we did for the previous cylinder or the center cylinder. Now, second, second circle. Okay. So, let me try to show you the laboratory conditions that uh, what is the voice in the laboratory. I will just switch on my sound here. You can see 1, 2, 3, 4. We have marked 4 points, 3 points were the minimum, 4 points can also be marked. So, you can see in laboratory conditions there is a lot of noise, okay. that is why we have tried to record uh, separately in the laboratory. So, you can see, you can just uh, now watch that uh, the blink of the integrator is also there and the beep is also there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 points are marked. Okay. We can start it with, for the circle, Four points are better to choose. So, similarly, we are trying to make these circles, okay, one, two, three, and four. When that probe is touching the surface, these points are being marked here. So, these six circles are located here. Okay. Now we again select the plane. So, it, it will measure the slant plane, let us make this slant plane, this slant plane here, okay, this slant plane here. Also, we will try to say 1, 2, 3, okay, 4, we can mark more than 3 points as well. 
So, this slant plane is also located here. So, what is the angle between the plane between these two planes this slant plane and this uh, x y plane. So, we can go to construction you can see we have measure here measure and we have construction here. In the construction we can click angle now it will ask between which entities you need the angle ok plane 1 and plane 3 ok. So, the angle between plane 1 and plane 3 is 45 degree. So, this is the angle this showing 45 degree angle. So, similar to the angle we can also measure the distance between cylinder 1 and circle wall between this cylinder 1 this is a cylinder 1 this was cylinder 1 and circle 1 ok. So, we will select the distance distance we have selected distance here between cylinder 1 and circle 1. So, we have selected distance here distance in place of angle distance between cylinder 1 and circle 1 ok. So, distance between cylinder 1 this is circle 1 and cylinder 1 that is the origin is 11.98 ok it is showing the nominal and measured ok. The different planes here this is x y plane this is y z plane this is x z plane this is again y z plane ok. So, this is again x z plane So, now I rotate it 90 degree a 90 degree b 180 ok. Let me repeat this this is a 90 b 180 if I have made this change I have to put this change in the software as well. So, I will put a 90 a movement as 90 and b as 180. So, I have putting this movement that means, two if you see this is a 90 b 180 ok you can see a 90 a 90 here b 180 ok a 90 b 180 we click yes because we are going to measure now the y z planes that is why we have turned this to this direction. This is a locking nut on this side locking screw on the other side we have locked the probe here. Now, we will measure this y z plane again laboratory. So, we will measure the 8 points here 1 2, 3, 4 in the laboratory conditions 1, 2, 3, 4 ok. So, we are we have located another cylinder here ok which which is at 90 degree to the cylinder 1 cylinder 2 this is cylinder 2 yes yeah, this is 90 degree to cylinder 1. So, how much is the depth from the planes? So, we select the plane again. Now, this is y z plane, this is y z plane 1, 2, and at any point you can just touch it 3. Okay. This is y z plane. So, we go to this construction, we go to the construction and try to see the distance from the plane. Well, let us see the angle angle of the plane with cylinder 2. Okay, we have taken it to some high, high position and we will go to uh, uh, construction here then we will select the angle ok this angle is selected angle between you can see plane 1 enter and cylinder 2 should be there cylinder 2 enter ok. Now, we click ok and yes now between this cylinder and this plane what is the angle what should be the angle between this cylinder and this plane is there any angle no the angle should be 0 let us see what is the angle what is the 
computer reports. So, it is showing the angle as 0 0.173004, it is quite close to 0, 0 0.1, okay. so it is 0. Okay. So, this angle is 0, using construction we can measure the angle, distance, then uh, uh, the depth, okay, the arc, all these things can be measured. Now, we will measure this cone, this cone here. Again, we will change the position to measure this cone, A has to come back to its 0 position, you will select A 0 and B 0. Okay. A 0 and B 0. So, we click OK, yes, OK. So, A is again brought to 0 position and B is again brought to 0 position. The angle is 0 0. Lock the nut here. Okay. Now, we will measure the cone. So, it has appeared here. Now, we will mark the points. We will measure the cone 1, 2, 3, 4, the little depth in another plane, in the second plane. So, the four points in one plane, the four points in the other plane were marked. So, it has generated four plus four, eight points in two different planes. So, this is the measured and the nominal dimensions here. So, let us see, it is also giving the height of the cone from the reference plane. So, here is the cone. So, the cone angle here shown is the cone angle is 45 degree. Okay, you can see the cone angle here, cone angle is 45 degree. So, then uh, we go for A 90 and B 0, A would be 90, B is kept at 0 position only. Let me turn A to 90, okay. A is turned to 90 degree and B is at 0 position only. So, let us measure the plane on the other side this will be named as plane 5. So, this is y z plane, y z plane that is y axis and z axis. So, we will select 3 points, we will check another plane here, y z plane, we will check 3 points near to y z plane circle. So, we are measuring this plane at an angle 1, 2, 3. Okay. So, we select the plane, take 3 points near to y z plane circle. Oh, see, this is the plane at an angle, this is the plane at an angle. Okay. Now, this is the potential or the beauty of the CMM that we can uh, by using a single setup we can measure all the parameters in different directions in different uh, you know this is a structure or this is a structure of the known parameters cylinder cone all those things also free form can be measured okay so we can store the data files in igs format so these all parameters can be exported then we can save it to the file all those things can happen so they are now measuring uh, the circle on the other side on the yz plane so, we can save the data in excel format. Okay. Now, this circle is again measured, this plane is now this plane is again measured the y z plane, the y z plane is measured. Okay. Now, we are measuring the circle on the y z plane, there is circle on the other side like this, actually cylinder on the other side as well, okay. but we are just measuring the circle. 1, 2, 3 and 4, 
So, you can see this circle is located big circle on this plane ok circle 7 on plane 6 this is plane 6 this is circle 7 this is located here. Similarly, we can locate all the features, but now uh, I like to move forward. So, we will uh, try to see how the data is stored. So, IGES format is there, okay, IGES format, data can be stored in IGES format, we click that IGES. So, what data we like to store, what points, all the compensated points. Okay, then we export it into the IGES format. Okay, so it is located in desktop frame curve. IGES format is located there. So we can read the IGES format. Also, the data can be generated in uh, the Excel, and also we can have the PDF uh, file. We are now making a PDF file. Okay, we just named it ABCD. Now, we will save it as PDF is already saved here. So, now I am opening the PDF file. So, this is the element list. We have generated this plane and the dimensions of the plane x, y, and z measured nominal, what is the deviation, okay. Then up low, and uh, did you know this the deviation, this distribution, not exactly distribution, but the tolerances can also be uh, obtained from here. Then plane 1 we measured first, then we measured plane 2 dimension for that. For the cylinder, we have x, y, z diameter of the cylinder, cylindricity, cylindricity is close to 0, then sigma value for that. Then for circle also, circularity, circularity is 0, 0 like exit is perfect circle. So, x, y and z coordinates and diameter of the circle, it is 6 mm uh, dia, so it is showing like quite close to 6, this is 12 mm dia. So, this 12 mm, 11.99 it is quite close to the 12 mm. Then uh, we circle the circle 2, okay, circle 3, circle 4, circle 5, all these circles, okay. The coordinates of the circles which, it, okay, the, the first circle or the cylinder where that we have, similarly, the circle 2, circle 3, circle 4, okay, circle 5, the dimension for that. So, then we have circle 6 plane 3 that was x y plane the angles that we measured the angle for the first angle that we measured between plane 1 and plane 3 plane 1 and plane 3 the angle was 45 degree ok. Then distance we measured between the origin origin that is the cylinder and the circle ok that distance is given here then cylinder 2 features. So, these features are all stored here the distance between plane 1 and cylinder 2, if you remember this distance was 0 0.17, okay. so this distance is shown here. So, all these uh, features that we measured are also stored here, the data is stored. Not only this data, the coordinates, we can also generate the equations out of them. Also, we can obtain the three dimensional, this same three dimensional feature, okay, this shape. Like I said, from this is point cloud, I can read and read. I can because this was a structured form, so I just use the manual operation. I can also use the CNC operation. In CNC operation, what we do? What we do? We actually just put the joystick away. We wouldn't use the joystick, and just using just will command the machine that at each one mm or at each two mm, it will locate the points. So, you can see I have just brought it close to the plane. So, nominal path the auto measure, auto measure, measure the start point of the curve. So, we, we have this is automated mode. So, start point is located, this is a start point located. Now, the maximum step is 3 mm, this step is 3 mm. To locate a denser 
mesh or denser point cloud, we can reduce this length. Okay, let us reduce this to some sort of length. 1 mm. Okay, go. First position. Okay, yes. Move the tip to position. Clear the first point and scan. Okay. Now at each 1 mm, when we click at each at each 1 mm, we start locating the point. The first reference point has started from this point. We have kept joystick here. It is moving by itself. You can see. At each 1 mm, it is measuring. Okay. At each 1 mm, it is recording the points here. You know the points are being added here. It will keep recording unless it limits exceeds uh, like at the you know in this direction in the x direction 500 is the length it can move 500 mm. So, it can it can keep move, moving up to 500 at all unless this workpiece finishes here it would not find anything here. Okay. So, this is 1 mm. So, let me try to do it again. So, you know at the end now it has moved to the other direction 90 degree okay. and degree is now again locating the points here. Okay, the people are talking in the laboratory. So, it has generated only 13 points and we shown here it has generated more than maybe I think 30 points. Uh, it has made, so, these points are located at each 1 mm distance you can see the points are generated. Okay. This is how the automa or the CNC mode of the machine works. So, this is we have generated the features. Now, this is we have generated the features, we have generated the which is a structure, this was structured point cloud and triangular mesh we can say we can generate of that. The next step was the alignment. Okay. The alignment of these shapes can be done to generate the overall this 3D shape. Okay. So, it has generated the curve at a distance, we did not actually uh, define the home position before it has generated a curve at, at a place at a distance from this, this, this uh, surface that we generated. So, let us uh, try to do this again. So, it has come here, we did not change the A0 and B0, you know A0 and B0 was to be kept. So, maybe the start point we change A to 0 and B to 0, A0, B0, we measure it again. Now, let us keep the distance as 2 mm and measure it again. Okay, we have kept the joystick here and it is now measuring. Now, the gap is 2 mm. So, now the machine is working in the CNC mode. So, this is how our software and uh, this coordinate measuring machine works. You can see the points are generated being generated here. You can see the points are being generated here, okay. six points are generated at 2 mm distance each and uh, auto measure again we can keep measuring like this. So, this is how we use the coordinate measuring machine. Uh, this was just uh, very trivial or very basic use of the coordinate measuring machine that uh, we saw in the laboratory. We can also measure the curves, the unknown curves or the unstructured features. The similar procedure would follow, we will just first generate the points, okay. so using CNC mode we can generate the points, the point cloud can be generated. Then we can have the triangle mesh of that if we need to do some analysis. Triangle mesh is required when we need to produce the shape 
from the points from the point cloud then we optimize the mesh ok what size of the triangles do we require then we align them align them to get the final shape and finally the data can be stored in the STL format for the production for the manufacturer or for the engineer. So, at this juncture this was all in 3D measurements. So, thank you for being with us we will meet you again next time. Thank you. Thank you.